So there's two MSc programmes here, the MSc in Medical Physics, which we've been running since 1968, so we're now about to celebrate our 50th anniversary, and the MSc in Medical Imaging, which we've been running for since about 2000. Both those programmes are really focused on the technology, you know, the science, the physics, if you like, of, of medical imaging. Uh, the main difference is the Medical Physics programmes covers the full range of, of the physics applications to medicine, so it includes therapeutic techniques, most importantly radiotherapy, Whereas the medical imaging programme, as the name implies, is really focused on imaging techniques. During the course, the students will learn about how MRI works at a fundamental level and what we will do is take the students here and show them the system and allow them to see that the principles that they've learned about in the lecture is actually being applied in the real world. So the students spend a fair amount of time in, in class and we have a, a decent number of hours each day where students are actually in class being, being lectured, uh, but then there's also quite a large amount of time spent doing practical sessions. So we'll make good use of our local facilities. Students will get to work on some of the imaging and therapeutic machines over in the hospital and doing practical sessions there as well. The university has a very close connection to the hospital, so we're able to take patients from the hospital and image in their scanner and we have access to the medical expertise of the doctors in the hospital. So a lot of our staff that are involved in our MSc programmes, both the physics and the imaging programmes, are staff that are working in hospitals day in, day out, doing this job. So we're really addressing that demand for the skills that are required to do the job. I personally enjoyed being able to regularly go to the hospital to see the inner workings of a real clinical setting, bridging the gap between what I've learned in the classroom to what actually occurs in the hospital. I like the fact that they are connecting the theoretical part with the clinical part, so it makes sense for us. Also, the help that we got from here, I mean, their doors always open and they encourage us to ask questions and never hesitate, even with simple music questions. Every one of us, the members of staff, will happily go to their way to help if you go and ask them. Uh, I felt completely supported uh, through the whole time of my studies. And there's basically about three options students have. So some students will go and work in hospitals, either in the UK or elsewhere, so they'll be taking on the standard medical physics type of roles, or some of the other roles open to people with our MSCs, so technologist roles, uh, dosimetrist roles, things like that. And so they'll be working in a healthcare environment. Um, some will be working in academic environments, they'll go and do PhDs and carry on with a research track, again either in the UK, Europe or, or the rest of the world. There's been a big increase, uh, an exponential increase in demand for physicists over the last 20, 30 years, and that's showing no signs of slowing down. But also there's a big variety globally. So in Europe, there's about 10 physicists employed per million people of the population. In North America, around about 20, but in the rest of the world, less than two, and in some parts, less than one. So there's clearly quite a big demand. As other countries start adopting and increasing the use of technology in healthcare, there's gonna be an increase in demand to train up the scientists.